Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to delineate the watershed of the Yukon River. In order to do that, we're going to use a suite of tools that are in the same tool set. So if you search for watershed and go to that tool set, we're going to use the tools in this hydrology tool set to delineate our watershed. First step is for every pixel, what is the flow direction in that pixel? Use this tool flow direction. Input is our raster that's a square raster. In this case, it's filled. And then we'll output and we'll call this flow direction dot tiff. The flow direction geoprocessing tool outputs a raster that has these special values. If we look at ArcGIS help, it will describe what these categories represent. The tool flow direction creates a raster of flow direction from each cell to its steepest downslope neighbor. And then this is what the raster values represent. If you have a raster value of one, it means the steepest gradient to the neighboring pixel will be to the right. If you have a raster value of 16, it means the steepest gradient to any of these eight neighboring pixels will be to the left. Our next step will be to use the flow accumulation tool, which requires an input of a flow direction raster. Our input flow direction raster we just created and then our output, we'll call it flowaccumulation.tiff. And then just OK. And wait, and wait, and wait. My computer, it took 45 seconds to execute that geoprocessing tool. So your computer, it may take a few minutes. Now we have for every cell, what is the number of cells that flows into each cell? So if we zoom to layer, let's zoom in on Western Alaska and let's change our symbology. Go to symbology and classify. Let's give it two classes. And let's classify these two classes manually. And let's give it a threshold of 10,000. So if it's less than 10,000, no color. If it's a flow accumulation of 10,000 or above, we'll color it some blue color. Now we have high flow accumulation rasters. And what we want to do is find where the Yukon River enters the Bering Sea. Pixels with high flow accumulation, we color coded blue. So let's change the color code where we have sea level is zero for our elevation. So if we go to that symbology, let's color code that as no color. And that will make it easier to find where the Yukon River channel, the last pixel. So here's the Yukon Flats. So if we zoom in on the Yukon Flats, here's the Yukon River. And if we follow the Yukon River, it's going and it joins the Tanana River. And then we're flowing down. And here's where the Yukon River enters the Bering Sea. So if we zoom in on that area, what we want to do is find that pixel. So if we do an identify on our flow accumulation, that pixel has a flow accumulation value. So what we want to do is isolate that pixel so we can use the con tool to isolate that pixel. The pixel value was 837584, so we're going to say is the value greater than, not the exact value, but we'll use 837580, and is the value 
less than or equal to, and we'll give it nine zero. So control C to copy, control V to paste. And then if that's true, we'll give it a value of one. If it's false, we'll give it a value of no data. And we'll call that high flow accumulation .tip. And then just okay to execute that con, test that condition. There are two pixels that meet that condition and those two pixels are right at the outlet of the Yukon River. So then we can use this to start the delineation of our watershed. So we're basically going to start at these two pixels and then go out until the flow direction changes at a ridge line. To do that, we'll use the watershed tool. Our flow direction raster we created and our pore point raster is the output. So the output is these two pixels, which are our high flow accumulation. That's going to create a raster of watershed, and we'll output that to our home folder, and we'll call this Con River Watershed. If notice, it does start at those two pixels, and then it goes out until there's a change in flow direction. Then, if we go to our properties, let's do unique value, and we'll give it some watercolor, and then we'll give it a symbology under display of 50% transparent. And then we'll uncheck our flow accumulation and then zoom to layer. Here is the estimated area of the Yukon River watershed. You notice along the Brooks Range, it basically stops at the crest of the Brooks Range because this is the watershed draining to the north slope of the Brooks Range. And the same thing in the Alaska Range. If we zoom to layer in the Alaska Range, here it's flowing into the Copper River Basin, not the Yukon River Basin. And our final step is we'll convert this watershed that's a TIFF raster into a polygon. Use the raster to polygon tool to convert our watershed where one represents you're in the Yukon watershed to a, and we won't simplify, we'll follow every grid cell. And then we'll name this Yukon River. And since we're going to, into a folder, it's going to be a shape file. The advantage of that is we can symbolize our watershed polygon. So zoom to layer. We'll symbolize it as hollow and then give the outline color some bluish color, a thickness of three. Here is a polygon representing the Yukon River watershed, and then we can calculate what's the area of that Yukon watershed in square kilometers. So if we open up the attribute table, we'll add a field for area, so double precision, and it'll be in square kilometers. And then we'll calculate that watershed area in square kilometers, And then we'll adjust that numeric value, nothing to the right of the decimal, add with thousands and show zero, add with zeros and show thousand separators. Our estimate of the Yukon River watershed is 837,586 kilometers or square kilometers. And let's go to properties and we'll give it an alias, and then we'll give it one to the right of the decimal. So there we have it.